what's up guys got another EDC for you today um, once again there hasn't been a video since my last EDC because this has been a very busy month for me um, just finished school that's nice summer's here um, but outside of that and not much been going on uh, except the couple things I've done just to clear my head during this season um, which I brought a lot of these things too so I'm sure you'll hear about it in this video but let's jump into this with my pen. Now this is the same old, same old pen. I always carry Hoffman Richards Tactical Stinger Pen. Now, honestly, I, I love pens. They're really nice. Now once again, this one, it's pretty much water sealed, so it's kind of difficult to get open in camera without me trying to hit my tripod, but let me do that now. Definitely not as difficult when you don't have to keep it in frame. But this, it's a great pen. It writes well. It's big and beefy, which is kind of the reason I bought it, but I'm kind of not as big a fan of that now. I prefer more slim, sleek type of things, honestly. Um, but with this, it's a great pen. Like I said, it writes well. But it's just meant to be durable and beefy. And then it's a tactical pen. And so you're supposed to have a pointing point to, you know, be an impact rod be uh, kind of like a Coupaton. So it's an impact tool if you need it to be. I've, of course, really never used it for that. I think most people wouldn't, but um, if you need it, it's always there. Um, this has been in my pack most days. I have carried this a couple days outside of my pack. Um, just like going to dinner or something, I'll throw it in my pocket. But this is not everyday everyday carry this is just part of my carry honestly if these videos were just called carry they'd be so much more simple uh, next thing frog lights this and same with a lot of these things once again i didn't carry three knives ever so i'll get to that in a minute but um this was in my bag when i went into the range not the shooting range different type of shooting an archery range as you guys know i'm into archery i really haven't posted any videos on archery if you guys want to see that let me know but I have talked about it in past videos, past CDCs. Uh, but this is my frog light. As you can see, it doesn't look very bright right now when you're under a lot of lighting. But it, it is a very bright light, and it does do its job well. This is my smaller out of the two lights I carry, the other one being the Thrunite TI-5. This one, it's black, it's smaller, doesn't have a pocket clip, and has this little bottle opener on the end, which does work quite well but it's just a smaller light that fits in a bag anywhere and works great. Next, let's talk about my watch. There's not much to it. You guys have seen my watch. I'll give you both sides. Here's the thing that I want to ask you guys about on the topic of watches. What kind of strap do you guys like? Because honestly, I prefer leather straps significantly. I mean, but that might be me. It might be because I'm a younger guy. I mean, Leather can be more casual than a lot of metal bands. Also, I really prefer um, smaller watches. I need them to be very thin. As you can see, if I was to put this on my wrist, this is a smaller, thinner watch. And I do have kind of small wrists, um, but it is smaller. Um, the bands are, of course, are leather, which I definitely prefer. But, I mean, I might end up changing my mind sometime, try something else. But I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. If there's a certain band that you like only buy, or why you like whatever band you like. Um, just as a fun topic. Next, I guess we'll save knives for last. Wallet. This is the Colombian... Okay, wrong side. I folded my trifold wallet wrong. Yeah, see, it's been a while since I've carried this one. Oh okay. yeah. Um, this is some Colombian wallet, honestly, I don't even know. I got it for my birthday so long ago, I don't remember. Um, as you can see, there's a logo. It's a trifold wallet. Um, I just took things out of it because I'm going to swap back. But the times that I've carried this, um, which, once again, isn't very often. Honestly, I mean, like, on my person. It's normally in a backpack. Um, but I, I, I don't need it that much, honestly. Uh, a lot of things I can have in my phone pocket, like separately, like if I need a card or something. Um, but, you know, phones, they do a lot of things now. 
I don't really need this for a lot of things, but it's always good to have cash on you, and I'll normally carry a couple card tools in there and all, so good things. Um, but the other wallet I carry, which I'll carry more, um, is the big skinny wallet, but I wanted to give this one another shot, and so I carried it most recently. Let's talk about knives. Knives, 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 knives. Now, these are three knives. Um, this one, of course, always is a theme. This is my primary, primary carry knife. Now, as you guys know, I do like knives a lot, but recently, there's just something about carrying it in my in a pocket. It's slowly gone down for me. I think a lot of it is that it's summertime, and that I can't like have as many layers. I'm wearing like gym shorts, chino shorts, whatever. Um, rarely jeans, but um, it, it's just it's baggier, even with a very slim and light knife like this. Now this is the Benchmade 940, and but of course knives are very helpful tools. I think we all know that. Um, a knife is a very useful tool, and so having one in your bag is always a good option. But this is my pocket carry and occasionally bag carry. Um, Benchmade 940-2, one in my opinion, one of the best knives out there. It's just a great blade. It will last you what seems like forever. G10 scales. That's what the dash two is for. And same deal, as you can see there, S3V, Osborne design. You guys already know it, I've reviewed it. Great knife. Now, these two guys. Uh, I don't believe I ever carried this one in my pocket this month, um, but both of these were in bags, like I've said. And I know this one was particularly in my bag when I went down to the range. Um, why? Because this is one of my favorite knives just because it's fun it's snappy um, and it looks nice it is a beefier knife as you can see Ganzo uh, this should be the 727 let me check 721 721 not 707 or 727 70 oh well, whatever I just said now I'm getting it confused 721 let me check that 721 yes 721 G721 G being for gonzo or green, really whichever one you want. And this also does come in other scales. Um, I've seen some with a blade that's really similar to this, just like maybe a recurve or something, um, instead of a completely flat ground. And you get dark wood, light wood, gales. Um, you can also get this in black g But this is a heavier, beefy knife. As you can see, if I open it, there are no milling in the liners. It's just there yeah there you go it is a very beefy knife and then with the bolster up here it's just i mean very thick just hunks of steel and it's not titanium or anything so it is heavy now this is a cheaper knife but it is just fun honestly it does have a pretty good action it's a push button auto as you guys saw and it just looks like a great blade to me and so it's fun just to carry around throw in your bag and i mean it's just, it's just a fun knife. Um, Spyderco Tenacious. Probably the most reviewed knife on YouTube. I'd say that's fair. Probably second or third. <laughs> the Benchmade 940. But, oh, and the Ontario Rat. Ontario Rat 1 and 2. They are probably second. But, oh, man. And Kershaw Skyline. I'm just going to keep coming up with ones while I think of it. Uh, but the Spyderco Tenacious, it's a great knife, as you guys probably all know. Flat ground is like a $40 knife, it's really great. ACR 13 MOV, um, not as cheap as this knife, the Gonzo, but easily a fourth or third of the price of that knife. Um, now, it's no Benchmade in my opinion, it's not quite up there with quality level. But for forty dollars, I'd say this, this, and like the Ontario Rat, and yeah, probably the Skyline too, are some of the best knives you're gonna get for the price easily. Um, G10 scales, um, same as the Benchmade G10, oh, and honestly, this G10 you can find it in every knife. It's not the hardest material to come by, and it's just good quality. People like it. It'll last you a long time and not show wear. It's a great handle material. 8CR13MOV as the blade steel. 
definitely not my favorite blade steel. I don't have really any bad experience with it, except just normal sharpening it. It is softer. Um, now I'm not the biggest steel genius. I don't know everything about their carbon contents and yeah, they point whatever for this with iron and chromium, but I do know that this is a softer steel for me in my experience. Of course, heat trees have a lot to do with that, but um, HCR 13 MOV in my opinion, is a softer steel than something like S30V. Um, S, S30V, for me, is just like pretty much a perfect line. It's a common steel on the upper side of knives, like $100 up. You see a lot of S30V or even S35VN. If you're gonna look into it. blades like Chris Reeves, he has a lot of those. I think all of his blades are in S35 VN. But as you can tell, it's a great steel. Um, it just goes yeah, well for me. It's right in the line of not impossible to sharpen, like M4 or something. But it just stays sharp forever. It's great stuff. But primary carry. Maybe carried this once, but I know I carried it in a backpack for sure and just went to the range with, but thought you guys might want to see it. So my everyday carry, of course, you'll see things like that, that, yeah, or come up. Oh, there's the frog light rolling in. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to subscribe because I mean, that's always great. You'll see important content, uh, but I'll see you guys in a later video. Peace.